Even if you are not a big fan of history, you would still probably know that the Europeans love to own geographically distant areas away from their motherlands, which is apparently known as colonialism. Between the 15th century and the mid 20th century, almost every part of the world came under some kind of domination from a European power. Either it became a protectorate or a protected state, or in worst cases, a colony. Some maps to give you a better insight. This is what the Portuguese ruled, the Spanish, the French, and this is what the British ruled. It seems like we almost covered the whole world in these maps, but it's also important to note that not all countries came under total control. Some countries were just under the spheres of influence, which meant that they were ruled by a local leader and could control their internal affairs, but had no say in their foreign policy or trade, for example. These territories were called as protectorates. Other countries like China were subjected to various unequal treaties and had to give up certain trading ports, but they never lost their complete autonomy, so it is debatable if we can include such countries in this list. More on that later. The real question is, which countries managed to escape European colonization completely? Simple answer, Japan, Korea, Thailand and Liberia. Yes, just 4 countries, that is not a lot. So what was so special or not so special about these countries that they were never ruled by the western powers? Let's dig deeper so that I can stretch this video a bit longer. Both Japan and Korea escaped the first wave of colonization because their location was too remote for the Europeans. But can just location and distance come in the way of these mighty Europeans, each of them who were dreaming about world domination? Probably not, so maybe that wasn't the sole reason. Japan at that time was governed by the Tokugawa shogunate, who ruled them from the year 1600 to 1868. During this period, Japan had cut off almost all contact with the outside world. They followed a policy called as Sakoku, which literally meant closed country. Sounds a bit familiar. The only Europeans allowed were the Dutch, who were given a trading post near Nagasaki. Now, think of it, trying to invade a country of which they know nothing about and involved a voyage of thousands of miles in the ocean to the other side of the world probably wasn't a great idea. Also, Japan had a lack of natural resources and maybe more abundance of sharp swords of the samurais, so trying to colonize them just wasn't worth the effort. But Japan was forced to open up to the world when the US warships arrived on their shores in 1853, demanding an open trade agreement. And by that time, Japan had fallen behind in technology due to its isolation and had to accept. So it took warships and a military threat just for a trade agreement. So what would it take to colonize the country? Perhaps a lot more than that. Even the Mongolians tried to conquer Japan back in the 13th century and they failed. Twice. So, the Japanese were extremely hostile to the outsiders. Later, at the start of the 20th century, Japan itself started to colonize other countries and dreamt to be a world power. So, by then, invading Japan was just impossible. On the other hand, Korea, which was then unified unlike now, was under the protection of the Chinese Empire. Also, it wasn't a top priority for Europeans for the same reasons as Japan, just too far away from Europe. Although the Chinese tried to keep their influence over Korea, they were weakened by their loss in the Opium Wars to the British and were themselves under the threat of colonization. At the same time, Japan entered the scene and wanted to influence Korea, and China got angry over this and both went to war over it. Japan won the war and later in the year 1910, Korea became a colony of Japan. So the Koreans did really well resisting the Europeans but really bad resisting their neighbors Japan who ruled them for 35 years. Some 3,400 kilometers southwest of Korea was Thailand, which was the only country in Southeast Asia not to be colonized by the West. Thailand, or as it was called as Siam during that time, was surrounded by the British and the French on both sides. The British approaching from the West, conquering India and Burma, while the French were coming from the other side, conquering the land which is now present-day Vietnam and Cambodia. The Siamese kings read the situation well in advance and played cleverly. They decided to modernize the country by strengthening the military forces and reforming the administration, the economy and the society. One more thing that favored Thailand was that it was in the middle of two powers who were rivals among themselves. Britain and France had been battling out for centuries but at this point they decided to take a cautious approach. The British wanted Thailand to act as a buffer state between the British and the French Empire. A buffer state means a neutral state which is created so that the two different colonizing powers do not come in direct contact with each other. 
Hence, a treaty was signed between Britain and France in 1896 which gave Thailand a status of a buffer state. So we could say Thailand was clever and kind of lucky in avoiding colonization. Next is Liberia which is a bit surprising since it's in Africa and Africa was being torn apart into pieces in a mission called as the Scramble for Africa. Liberia is a country in West Africa which was founded by the slaves who were set free from the United States. It was seen as a protectorate of the US even though they never formally colonized them. So nobody wanted to mess up with the United States over a piece of land that wasn't much valuable, wasn't in a strategic location and wasn't worth the effort at all. Hence Liberia became the only country in Africa not to be colonized by the Europeans. And wait, before anyone says I didn't mention Ethiopia, let me mention Ethiopia. Ethiopia did fairly well in surviving the scramble for Africa. The Italians tried twice to invade the country, first in 1895 where they lost but won the second war in 1936 and ruled Ethiopia for 5 years. Not a very long time, some consider this to be a form of colonization while some say that the invasion was just a part of the second world war. Other countries which would fall under the debatable list would be China. China was never fully colonized by any European powers but it is not like it was completely free. There was a huge demand for Chinese tea, silk and porcelain in the British market but Britain didn't have enough silver to trade with the Chinese. So they introduced a barter system in which they would sell opium to China instead as a form of payment. The Chinese government didn't like this idea as this would make their population drug addicts who would not turn up for work which is definitely not good for the development of their country and hence it resulted in the opium wars with Britain. China was defeated in both the wars and had to cede to the demands of the British. The British were given Hong Kong and trading ports in Canton and Shanghai. Nepal and Bhutan were also never directly colonized but certain aspects like diplomatic relations were in control of the British. Many other countries in the Middle East became protectorates which are still not colonies but maybe they are better off in the debatable list since they didn't completely avoid European influences. So in conclusion, European colonialism didn't spare much of the world.